So how hungry are you? Real hungry? You famished? You starving? Are you really starving for the Word of God? Are you starving for that relationship? Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs. Is that right? 27.7 Say again. Proverbs 27 7. I think it's NIV today. NIV, giant print for old people. <laughs> Say amen when you're there. Amen. Amen. He who is full loathes honey, but to the hungry, even what is bitter tastes sweet. Have you ever ate stuff that just tasted great because you were really hungry? How many of y'all love liver and onions? I want to see how many people really love... There's quite a few of y'all. There's a lot of sick people in this world. If you didn't like it, it wasn't made right. Amen. We called that bait. Bait? But you know, no matter how, I mean, if you're really, really hungry, I guarantee you, how many of y'all have ate liver and onions, even though it's not your favorite thing, but you still, you eat liver and onions, you eat things you don't want to know about, like worms and crickets, uh, well, there's another one on the list here, collard greens, but I know everybody from the South probably likes collard greens, so. oh, amen, uh, spiders, that's on the list too. But how hungry have you been in the flesh that you've ate stuff that you just wouldn't have? Here's something. How? I mean, out of the list I just named, something on that list was gross to you. Some of it was liver and onions, but others loved it. But I mean, by the time I got to the worms and spiders, y'all were shaking your head. And ain't nobody here, I don't think. Salad. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Man, you would love to have a salad after three days with no food. In fact, you would love it. Amen. And, oh, uh, in fact, you you may not even realize how hungry you were, and it was so delicious until later when you're full and you're getting good food again, and you go back and try that stuff. I remember coming back from Iraq, and I told my wife, she's laughing. She she don't even know what I'm fixing to say yet. She does know where I'm going. And I told my wife, I said, you've got to have this. I went to the trouble of finding me the dehydrated hamburger, the dehydrated burger, you know, the beef, the dehydrated beef patty. I got this dehydrated beef patty. I got the jalapeno cheese. I got everything that I had back over there in Iraq. Now, when I, in Iraq, I'd almost kill somebody to get me some extra jalapeno cheese and get me some of those uh, dehydrated patties and uh, the MRE bread. And I would make me the best cheeseburger you ever had in your life. I'm telling you, this thing was awesome. And I had guys dying or trying to get the stuff from me. I was, ar- I was barding. Uh, I'll give you two MRE breads for this. I'll give you this. And we- Next thing I know, this cheeseburger thing, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? You actually did this? The che- that cheeseburger was awesome. I got back. I said, baby, you got to try this. She's like, what? I said, you got to try this. This is awesome. And I went around. I scrounged all this stuff. And I even went to the trouble of showing her how I did it with my little uh, 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 one burner stove. And, my, and I got it all ready, didn't I, baby? It was awesome. I got it all there. I said, this is going to be great. She goes, that looks nasty. I said, no, it's great. Then I bit in there. I said, oh my goodness, this is nasty. <laughs> but that thing was awesome while I was hungry. You getting this? So when you're really, really hungry, it don't matter what that food tastes like. It's really good. You know what I'm saying? Needless to say, that I didn't eat that whole cheeseburger. My wife laughed at me. She started laughing just now because I started sharing the story again. It was nasty. And then she used to send me this crystal light or something. And I, I thought that was the best thing since Peter Mutter Bread until I got back here and had, you know, a Diet Coke again. And I was like, ooh, that stuff's nasty. I can't have that. Many times we, na- we may not be eating the most flavorful, flavorful thing. It may not be something we really desire, but it's something we really need so that we can be filled. So that we can receive the protein that we need. You do understand what I'm saying. It may not taste great, but it's something that we got to have. It's something that the Lord wants to give us. And sometimes we read the Word and it's sweet. And sometimes we read that Word and if you're really, really hungry, it may not be what you wanted to hear, but it's what you needed to hear. 
And if you're really, really, how hungry are you? Because if you're really hungry, there's nothing you can't read, even though it, some of the scripture you don't find on the refrigerator, it really touches your heart. You really feel filled. You've become filled because you wanted the Word and you were hungry for the Word. Everything about God is not always strawberries and cream. It's not always a banana split. You know what I'm saying, little man? Sometimes that stuff's pretty hard to go down, but if you are really, really hungry, it will fill you. You'll be glad to get it. Amen? Glory to God. There's some things about God and His procedures that in my flesh I don't like. But we do. And when you think about it, you're like, oh man, I remember the last time. I fought with God about doing it, but God made it clear I had to do it. And there's about nearly 20 of y'all that joined me on a 21-day fast. Daniel fast. Now, that's hard to swallow, but it's fulfilling when God's telling you to do it. Amen? And if you're hungry, if you, how hungry are you? If you're really hungry, fasting is sweet. But if you're not hungry, it's a problem. You see you where I'm going? Amen? Okay. Total submission. Uh-oh. No one wakes up in the morning and says, you know what, I think I'm going to be totally submissive today. <laughs> yeah? Doesn't happen, does it? No. But if you are really hungry, you'll wake up and you'll want to be submissive. How hungry are we? <coughs> we reach a point when we're so hungry that no matter what God provides through whatever means, we scarf it up. Just like that MRE cheeseburger. We just scarf it up. It's fulfilling. And we want to share it. Sometimes, you ever had a brother or sister share a piece of ministry or a piece of scripture with you and you're like, not getting it? <laughs> they're real hungry and they're providing something because they're excited, but maybe you just got a feeling of something else. You see what I'm saying? So you're just not getting it yet? But I guarantee you, if, you keep, if you're hungry and keep digging, it's going to come to you. Amen? I had a brother tell me this morning with this Bible study we're doing, he said, man, I'm having a hard time. I said, that's okay. He looked at me funny. I said, it's okay. We're all having a hard time. Because we're, we're wanting to get totally filled and we're trying to figure some things out. Amen? God is working on each one of us differently through the same Scriptures. How many sermons am I giving this morning? Am I giving one sermon, Randall? Or am I giving... I'm giving 55 sermons. You see that? Because it's going to touch you different, Vernette, than it does Chuckster over here. You see what I'm saying? It's not me. God's touching 55 people through one worthless dirt suit. Praise God that I'm just a willing vessel. And you're listening. Amen? It's not about me. Scarf it up. Whether it's fasting, submission, or just a hard word to swallow. If you're hungry, you'll scarf it up. That's my words. Scarf it up. That means eat it really fast. You can smack your lips even. Amen? Are you hungry for God? Are you really hungry for God? How, how hungry are you? Um, Psalm 42... One. Uh, what's it say? Isn't that about the deer? Yeah. I see that iPhone got there faster than my paper. That's see that's that's the thing, you know. iPhones. Everybody's got their phones out. Here we go. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. As the deer panteth for water. We watched a bunch of deer this weekend, huh? Amen. Most of them were going to the water or just coming back. They got their fill. They were hungry too. Um, how hungry are we? Are we like a deer that's panting for, panting for water? I mean, do you have that audible? <laughs> are, you, are you there? Are you that hungry for the Word of God? Are you that hungry for a relationship? An intimate relationship. We all have a relationship. You wouldn't be sitting in here. Okay, so it'd be silly to say, do you have a, but do you have an intimate relationship? I'll tell you what, is your relationship intimate enough? You can, there we go. Amen. No, we can always go to the next level. Amen. We can always go to the next level. Are you longing for the water? The living water? Amen. Are you, are you longing for it? Do you have a desperate need for God? Or are you satisfied with God? 
Because if you're satisfied with God, you've stopped. You realize you're not hungry. We have to stay hungry at all times. I heard uh, a spiritual father years ago, don't even remember who it was, but he said, um, Scripture is as shallow as for an infant to drink out of, and it's as deep as a scholar will never reach the bottom. One scripture, one scripture is as shallow as you want it to be, or you can go as deep and you'll never reach because the Lord, if you're hungry enough, the Lord will keep showing you the same, same scripture. Amen? How hungry are you? I, uh, I gave a message one time, main meal or short order, and I talked about, you remember that one? It's a long time ago, main meal or short order, and I, I used to be a short order kid, man, and my nickname was Cheeseburger Kid. I mean, I just went through and I, I got the fast food. In the main, that's how they did it, did it in the mess halls. You know, you could run over here and get a cheeseburger and some fries and sit down and eat. And the other guy's still waiting for his steak and or waiting for, you know, the, the main meal. And your, the line was longer because those people had something they'd figured out I hadn't figured out. And was that it was worth waiting on the main meal. Main meal lasts longer. And it fed you better. It was better for you. How many of us are hungry for the main meal? Or do you just want to get a checkbox for showing up and being there for a little while? Amen. Life has a way of taking the taste of God out of our lives. The, the worldly cares, our fleshly desires. I mean, um, there's a... I, me? Well, years ago, there wasn't no church after 12 on Sundays. Most time for beer and football. You see what I'm saying? And, and uh, that means I wasn't hungry. Y'all getting that, right? I mean, how hungry are you? Because if you're really hungry for a relationship, it's like we're studying our Bible study, is you've got to deny yourself. And you've got to take up the cross daily. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> denying ourselves it involves that fleshly desires that we have. Okay? Because the old man creeps back in there. Now, I praise God, I was delivered a long time from some of that stuff, but there's still some things that creep in there. It could be just riding my bike. Hello? This is a biker church. You're like, well, that's cool. Well, yeah, well, that depends on was God calling me to be doing something else at the time? Amen. Now, I was sharing with some brothers this morning. I get on the bike and I've got quiet time with the Lord and I speak with the Lord. But is that what I'm doing? Sometimes I'm not supposed to be on that bike. I'm supposed to be spending time with the Lord. I'm supposed to be spending time in fellowship with one another. It just depends. God's going to talk to you through this message. We become satisfied with mundane existence in what's called the habit of religion. And that is go to church. Check your box. And go right back to what you was doing Sunday night. Hello. I mean, I've been there. I've done that. I still struggle with that. With different things. That, um, I, I, we're selfish. We're selfish in the flesh. And it's easy to say, well, I want to do... Well, wait a minute. What's God want me to do? Well, I want to... What does God want you to do? Are you hungry? How hungry are you? Because if you're really, really hungry, you're always going to be asking, what does God want me to do? Not what I want to do. I hope that somebody really got that. Our relationship grows still without a lack of passion. A lack of passion for God. Um, 2 Samuel uh, 22, 2-4. Yeah, this is good. Second Samuel twenty two, two through four. Get your iPhone there. <laughs> and he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, the rock the God of my rock. In him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Isn't that awesome? And we, now we read that and we're like, Amen. I was getting some amens while I was reading Hallelujah. It's, it's a common uh, scripture that we refer to. And it's awesome. Psalm by David. Uh, that David's singing. Uh, uh, a ver scripture from David. And a, uh, it's, a, it's a song that he's singing. Or it's a praise, if you will, that he's singing. Amen. And uh, David is trying to explain to us what God is to him. But I want to do this again, and I'm going to emphasize so you get it. 
Because David has a limited vocabulary here. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock in him will I trust. He is my shepherd and the horn of my salvation. My high tower, my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved. Y'all get it? Did you see how many? You know what David was saying, right? God is mine, 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 mine. Is he yours? I mean, are you so? Mine, 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 mine. God is mine, 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 mine. Amen? Glory to God. God is mine. I wish all of you moved like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mine, 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 mine. Do you feel that way? Are you so hungry that you know God's yours? Do you know that He wants a personal relationship with you and that He, he wants you to be His friend? Hallelujah. Amen. I know we say that, but our actions sometimes say different things. So we, we, we take the time to show up at church or spend some time with some brothers and sisters in Christ, but then we, we, we just get right back on our selfish train and do the things that God wants, that, that God's not even involved in. If you're doing anything that God, and He shared with me at quiet time this morning, was if you're doing anything that God's not partaking of, hello? If you're doing anything that He's not partaking of, He wasn't part of that, then that's a selfish time. And was you glorifying God? Then how hungry are you? Because if you're really, really hungry, you're always going to be doing what? Panting after the water. Amen? Like a deer. You know, man after God's own heart, not because of praise. David wasn't man after God's heart because of praise. It was because he was hungry. He was so hungry that it caused him to praise and worship the Lord. Amen? Uh, the next long scripture is 1 Kings uh, 7. And I, I think this relates to all of us because a lot of us are, well, we're all, to some degree, unclean. We all fall short of the glory and we're not worthy. Amen? No one's righteous. Not one, not one is. And, and, and we, we, we are like these lepers. These four lepers. Uh, 2 Kings uh, 7, 3 through 9 says, And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one another, Why sit we here until we die? They were just sitting there and they were going to die. And they're hungry. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Somebody needs to hear this word this morning. Now therefore come. And let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Any hungry people out there? Any unclean hungry people out there? Glory. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. They were all gone. And the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. The Lord made them hear chariots. They heard horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said, No one other low the, he, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. They're scared to death. So the Syrians, what do they do? Verse 7, Wherefore they rose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. Everybody left. You getting this? God just made all this noise and they all left. And when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, these are the unclean that are dying and very hungry people. And they come into the camp. They went into one tent. They did eat and carried thin silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and did it again. There's nobody there. Not a single soul. They've all left the camp. Verse 9, then they came one to another. We do not do well. They're realizing they're not doing the right thing. And they say, this day is a good day, tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, this mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come. And what do they say? That we may go and tell the king's household. They're going to tell everybody what happened. 
Brothers and sisters, we're, we're the outcasts. We're the, we're the lepers, okay? We're the unclean. We're the hungry. How hungry are you? Are you hungry enough to get up and go into the city? Are you hungry enough or are you just going to sit and die? See, if we sit, we just become stale. No passion for God and we just die. Hello? We need to decide to die fighting. And get up and go. And what happens is when you make that step forward, the first step's taking the first step. Amen? And when you take that step forward to go into that city, God gets involved. You see how that happened? God got involved because the unclean, us that are hungry, hopefully you're really hungry, and decide to start moving, and God gets involved now. God has gotten involved because you want to move. Amen? Amen? And when God gets involved, food is provided. Amen. Are you getting that? Glory to God. Glory to God. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? You realize hunger drove them to action. If we deceive ourselves... Oh, I'm good. <laughs> You're going to starve to death. And the thing is, is you will starve slowly and won't even realize how hungry you were. Hello? You will die of malnutrition, but not even realize what's going on. Because you weren't hungry at all. You just sat there at the gate, like those four lepers was doing at the time, and just die at the gate. At the gate. Boy, there's another analogy. The gate of heaven is waiting on us. Amen. Amen. But we need to take some action. Let people know. We need to let God know we're hungry. Amen. Last scripture is Psalm 107.9. For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He will. Amen. Amen. So, in closing, simple question. How hungry are you? How hungry are you? There's some folks that needed to hear this. There's not a single person in here that did not need to hear this. But some of us need to apply it in our lives, in certain areas of our lives. Uh, well, all of us need to do that too. Because there's not a single one of us in here that hasn't got something in our lives that we placed in over as a priority is with our relationship with the Lord. Amen? I was sharing with Dennis this morning before we pulled out of the uh, campgrounds this morning. And uh, he, he, his lights, the, 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 the lights came on. He was like, oh yeah, I do that. I was like, amen, we all do, brother. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't ever want to have to admit. But the thing is, is we're unworthy. And we make mistakes. And there's certain things. He, one of the things we talked about was um, uh, the priorities of our families and where we place them. And we place our families over God a lot of times in our lives. Huh? I don't have the faith of Abraham. I shared that with my brother Dennis. I, there's no way. I, God would have to speak to me and then the Holy Spirit would have to control me because in the flesh, I know I can't take him on a three-day journey and then it ain't happening. In the flesh, I know that. But we're supposed to strive to have that faith. How hungry are you? Let's pray. Father God, a short message but so powerful. There's a lot of hungry people here, Lord. And a lot of us that need to be even a lot hungrier. Lord, I ask you to touch each and every one of us as we prepare to leave. Lord, make, make it feel like a famine. That we're starving for whatever you're providing. Through our brothers and sisters. Through the word itself. Lord through our prayers and our meditation. Lord show each and every one of us our weaknesses. Show us what we're placing over you. And fill us. So that we are changed for your glory. To do better things. To be more Christ like. Let people see your son in us. I pray everybody's leaving changed. For your glory. This morning. In Jesus' name we pray. And all his children said, Amen. Amen.